Rahim. All praise to God, peace be upon you all. I testify there is no God except Allah Almighty, and I testify that Muhammad is the prophet and messenger. My brothers and sisters, peace be upon you all. I am delighted to welcome you uh, here on behalf of the Center for Islamic Legislation and Ethics to the proceedings of the third international conference entitled Islam and Modern Ethical Dilemmas. Islam uh, does not consider ethics as a specific feature to any one nation or any one race or civilization. In Islam, uh, ethics are a common human uh, heritage. Uh, it is uh, therefore something uh, innate that God has bestowed upon us all. Ethics in Islam uh, uh, are a constant component uh, in, in man uh, from which his humanity is drawn. Uh, for this very reason, uh, the Prophet, uh, peace be upon him, uh, has been sent uh, to complement and uphold ethical behavior to remind man of his innate nature and the ethics that made him a man, really. And uh, for, this, uh, for, the, for this reason why the prophet has said, uh, he said that I have been sent to complement and uphold ethical behavior. The prophet has not been sent to institute ethics or to establish them uh, for, the, for the simple reason that they are innate in man. And his mission was to uh, complement them uh, uh, by, um, uh, by empowering man to better meet the challenges ahead that may uh, strip him from this ethical self. This is a starting paradigm to materialize and crystallize ethics uh, on earth and to solve ethical dilemmas that challenge man. Uh, therefore, um, the uh, uh, first uh, step uh, to help uh, solve ethical issues uh, is, uh, in essence, uh, to help man unveil and uncover his deeply rooted humanity uh, uh, that is deep down in him and be faithful to this innate nature. And uh, uh, coming back to the very essence of, uh, of man, so, uh, coming back to this very essence of man and, and uh, to be faithful to this innate nature, well, from Islamic perspective, this does not uh, uh, materialize unless one comes back to his creator, and this is what Allah said, uh, and know that Allah intervenes between a man and his heart. This is Surat Anfal 24. And he, in verse 19 of Al-Hashr, he also says, and be not like those who forgot Allah, uh, so he made them forget themselves. So the constant fact, i.e. that ethics are something inherent to man, is a, really, is a reality that is beyond anything material, any reason, any abstract mind. It is heavenly and supreme and makes man transcend earthly material. Man has, since the dawn of time, let go of his humanity and let it stray, giving, it, giving in to lust, to capital, to arrogance, and so forth. Uh, this has uh, caused uh, mankind uh, mayhem uh, through spoliation and, and uh, exploitations and, and massacres and, uh, and, and, and crises. Uh, uh, such uh, ethical deviations and uh, collateral damage were dealt with by resorting to violence, for example, and resorting to armed revolution. So horror at the end was countered by horror. But uh, in modern times, uh, we uh, had recourse to reason, uh, to rationale, uh, to cope with such issues, we enacted laws, uh, we uh, drafted uh, covenants and constitution to uh, strengthen deviant demeanors and ended up uh, 
thinking that humanity will only be salvaged by this approach, uh, i.e. Re res resorting to reason um, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and mind. Uh, our mind uh, became the uh, warrantor, the incubator of ethics, and even guarantees the development of mankind thanks to innovation and growth. However, little, little did we know that ethics can only be materialized when man unleashes the power within him and definitely not by focusing on research, uh, on re only on research. Our mind has then been uh, somehow used and, and, and abused and, and, and manipulated in a way that it made us overshadow our values and our core ethical principles. Uh, and therefore, the, the absolute sanctity of reason uh, stripped of ethics has become absolute uh, and, and, and represents now uh, a serious danger, uh, more serious than any uh, danger in ancient time. Uh, indeed, um, it has become a means to justify uh, violence, uh, to justify unethical behaviors, and even worse, when it is wrapped up and, and presented to the world as acts of civilization and that needs commanding. So when reason and, and science uh, overlooked the importance of human dimension in, in, in development, uh, slowly uh, we shifted from developing goods to serve man uh, to developing consumer goods. Uh, 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 consumer goods to uh, satiate uh, man's uh, uh, selfish and egoistic instincts. Uh, then um, man uh, started then uh, dealing with ethical uh, uh, dilemmas with, uh, with rationale, with reason, uh, as if uh, it were something uh, material uh, 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 which is deprived from any a human uh, dimension. So uh, this uh, 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 rational approach became mutually exclusive with ethics. And uh, in today's world, uh, when material outweighs by far the human dimension, well, science has become a danger, a serious danger, hence the necessity and the relevance of an ethical and human input in this respect. Uh, building uh, ethical societies with ethical people has become today way too complicated than innovating in state-of-the-art technology, for instance. Hence, um, it is our responsibility uh, today, we, to refocus on ethical issues when advancing in science and development. Uh, we should uh, we should rethink today's international order uh, based, uh, uh, um, which are based on uh, the uh, survival of the fittest, uh, who only accept, uh, uh, and this, uh, this, this survival of the fittest principle today uh, only accepts uh, others if they remain, um, if, or they, if they are subservient and pliant to his might, uh, but irrespective of their ethical standards. This order, today's order, that excludes others, namely the poor and vulnerable, irrespective of their uh, high ethical standards. Well, Muslims today, just like, just like others, are expected to contribute to ethical development and uh, uh, by going back and drawing from the ethical uh, 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 traditions uh, and, and, uh, and, and to solve, to help solve ethical dilemmas by drawing from their heritage, from their scriptures, to set the standards to today's world. In this very context, the Center of uh, Islamic Legislation and Ethics uh, in his third international uh, conference endeavors to treat some of the ethical dilemmas facing Islam, Islamic thought uh, in particular, and, and facing human 
conscience on a broader scope. To this end, there are four sessions, Islam and science, uh, economy and methodology, and then gender issues as well. And uh, to summarize, I would like to extend my thanks to all the guests, to all the participants, and uh, praise be upon God. Thank you very much. Thank you.